rejoice and be glad in it. So many things have happened this week. We pray for Penny and her family, Vicki's daughter, Angie, our friend Don, who is doing better. All those things that have happened this week, Lord, that have made it difficult to see you. It's been a long week. We need you now more than ever. We ask that you would direct our hearts and minds toward you and fill us with your spirit, bringing refreshing, renewal, peace, and joy. You remind us in your word that you are faithful to carry our burdens. You tell us that you will renew our strength and you promise to give us rest as we come to you. Forgive us for the times we have worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need for you, living independently of your spirit. Forgive us 
for letting fear and worry control our minds and allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc on our lives. Forgive us for not following your ways and for living distanced from your presence. You warned us through Isaiah not to call good evil and evil good, and yet we are seeing the prophecy happening before our eyes. Take off any blinders we may have that we can see what you see and act as you have commanded us to do in love and truth. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you that your ways are far greater than our ways and your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that your face is toward the righteous. You are close to the brokenhearted. You hear our prayers and know our hearts. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives, that we can be assured no matter what we're facing, your heart is toward us, your eyes are over us, and your ears are open to our prayers. Thank you that you surround us with favor as a shield, and we are safe in your care. We give you praise and honor for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship, for you are holy and just. We will declare that your love stands firm forever, for your loving kindness endures forever. May we, your people, also stand firm against the spirits of evil that bombard us daily. Shine your light in us through us and over us. Help us to never take this for granted this huge gift of love you have offered on our behalf. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all. Forgive us for being too busy or distracted by other things, for not recognizing what you've so freely given and all that Christ has done for us. Help us cease striving and to remember again that you alone are God. We choose to press in close to you today and keep you first in our hearts and lives. May we walk in your wisdom and purposes. May we stay strong and true to you. We pray for your protection over our lives, our families, and other believers, and those of us we encounter every day. We ask for your hand to cover us and keep us distanced from evil, the evil intent of the enemy, that you would be a barrier over us and that we would find refuge in you. We pray that you would give us discernment and insight beyond our years to understand your will, hear your voice, and know your ways. We ask that you would keep our footsteps firm on solid ground, helping us to be consistent and faithful. Give us supernatural endurance to stay the course, not swerving to the right or the left, or being too easily distracted by other things that would seek to call us away from a close walk with you. Shine your light in us, through us, and over us. May we make a difference in this world for your glory so that your purposes would stand. Set your way before us. May all your plans succeed. May we reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and healing. We praise you and we bless you, O Lord. Thank you that you reign supreme and we are more than conquerors through the gift of Christ. And now let us pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a special time for us at Evangel Heights. You see, this week school begins. <laughs> and so I'm going to ask that the following individuals will come forward, kneel at the altar, or if you prefer to stand, or just stand where you are. Parents, we do have parents in the sanctuary. Teachers, who have any teachers present? Staff, administrators, bus drivers, crossing guards, students. Now I'm gonna ask those of you, because they're standing, so those of you who are not standing, I'm gonna ask you to do what we do best. I'm going to ask that those of you who are able, stand up. These are the non-parents, non-students, non-teachers, non-administrators, non-staff. And I'm going to ask you to either reach your hand out towards the person who is standing or draw closer to them, envelop them as we prepare to pray. That will require some people to move. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's okay to reach your hands out. If you're not going to walk towards them, then please just reach your hands out towards them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Lord our God, we give you thanks for this new school year that will begin soon. We thank you so much for the parents and for the teachers and the staff, the administrators, the bus drivers, the crossing guards, the students. We just thank you for those who will be involved in the educational process this year. We pray, loving God, that you will bless these parents with your wisdom. Bless them with unconditional love. Oh, God, encourage their hearts as they face a new school year especially after the former COVID-19 impacted school year. Grant them the patience that they will need as they lead and guide their children. We thank you for these teachers and we pray your blessings upon them. We pray that you will stir up with them, them that passion for education that led them to this field in the first place. We pray, loving God, that you will bless the administrators with empathy and courage, and we pray that you will help them to think beyond the boxes that they sometimes find themselves in. Whisper new ideas, grant them a new vision as they take on their responsibilities of leading their particular schools. Help them to see each student as your child made in your image. We pray, loving God, that you will bless the teachers, the staff, the administrators, the bus drivers, and the crossing guards. We pray that you will bless them with your joy and excitement about the new school year. We pray, loving God, that you will help them to face any challenges that they may face. Thank you again for the wisdom that they will need. Thank you for granting them that wisdom to address those challenges that they will face this year. We pray, loving God, for our precious students. We pray, loving God, be they the youth, children, young adults or adults who are returning to school. Thank you for these students. Thank you for blessing them with the opportunity to receive an education. Help them to do their best, the best that they can do this school year. Thank you for the potential that each student 
has, and we pray that you will grant the teacher and even the parents the eyes to see the new potential. Loving God, we pray that you will fill in the educational gap that many of our children have experienced in light of the 2021 COVID-19 school year. Yes, Lord, we thank you for these children and youth. We thank you for the young adults and adults who are returning to school. We pray that as others encounter them, they will see them again, one who is made in your image, one who has unique skills and gifts. We thank you. Now, Lord, go before these parents, these teachers, staff, administrators, other school personnel and students. Lead them. Remind them that you are with them every day, every step of the way, to lead, to guide, to empower them, so that they may have an excellent school year like no other school year, because you are with them. May they trust you for all things. And we ask these petitions in the name of Jesus the Christ, the master teacher. Amen. You may be seated. Children of God, children 
that are at home, draw near. Come listen and hear what Jesus has for you today. Now I'm going to entice you a little bit. Do you know what these are? Cookies. And not just any cookies, chocolate chip cookies. Now tell me, do you know how to make these cookies? Well, we need the right ingredients, first of all. We need flour and sugar and milk and uh, chocolate chips and a few other things. And then we mix them all together and put gobs of them on our cookie sheet and put it in the oven. And they come out. But it's a little harder than just saying put flour, sugar, and so on in a bowl. We need instructions. We need to know how much of each of those things do we need. See, what's interesting about this is if we eat flour by itself, it doesn't taste very good, does it? But if we mix all these ingredients together, we get some really yummy tasting things. Donuts, cookies, cake, brownies, and so on. Oh, I love them, but I can't have them anymore. But as I was thinking about this, I thought about the word recipe. Now, a recipe, I don't know if any of you, some of you, the older folks will know what this card is. This is a recipe card. It gives me all the ingredients to make something. Now, I think some people probably use uh, their computers now or cookbooks, but how many know what a recipe card is? That's right. Some of us still use them, right? Okay. And so it tells us how much we need of each ingredient, and then it gives us instructions on what do first, second, third, fourth, and so on, tell us how, how hot the oven has to be, and so on. But as I was thinking about the word recipe, I thought about Jesus saying that he was the bread of life. What exactly does that mean? You know, we know that bread feeds us. Remember the story of Jesus with feeding the 5,000 people with bread and fish. So maybe when Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, he's just talking about feeding people. But I think he's saying something a little differently. I think he wants us to know him and follow his ways and help us live a good life. Now, if we don't have food, we, don't, we aren't healthy, we aren't strong, right? We gotta have food. But, and food gives us a good life, right? Okay. But there's another part of being, having a good life. And that is us growing into the people that are like Jesus. But how do we do that? Well, Jesus wants us to have a good life where we experience love and forgiveness and healing. But how do we reach that? How do we do that? Well, we have to use the ingredients that Jesus has given us for a good life. Ingredients like prayer, Knowing the faith stories in the Bible, stories of other people in their relationship with, with God, and worship of God. Now, by themselves, they're pretty good, but if we mix them together, we do them all, put those ingredients all together, we are going to experience the good life. Pray every day. Read your Bible and learn the stories and worship God. And when we put those all together, we have a good life that is love and forgiveness and healing.
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus to be the bread of life, to show us what life really is, to nourish us on the inside as well as on the outside. We thank you for the food you give us, but we also thank you for your word, that we can talk with you in prayer, and that we spend time, like today, worshiping you, the most awesome of all gods, the only God, the true, wonderful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture lesson comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. For we live by faith, not by sight. This is the word of the Lord.
If you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our passage comes from John chapter 6, verse 35, 41 through 51. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent, them, sent me draws them and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the word of God. I want to take this time to thank Kristen for blessing us today with special music. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And Katie, thank you again for the gift that you give to us every Sunday through your ministry of music. Glory be to God. Yes, yes. We're very clear that we're offering praise to God through clapping today for those who are in our midst. And again, I can't wait to receive the results of your spiritual gifts inventories to find out the gifts that you have as well that God is going to use to honor God and to bless God. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart bless you today, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let me say good morning. I, I just see Larry, and I just want to say good morning, Larry. Thank you. It's good to see you today. I don't know if you've discovered this, but uh, this journey that we followers are on, it's a faith journey. Have you discovered this? It's a faith, it's a faith journey. And um, God wants us to grow in our faith. God, God wants us to grow in our faith. So when I came in today, I was passing out Rubber bands, Becky, you know, I discovered some things about this congregation. <laughs> I pass out the rubber bands and people ask the question, who should I aim at? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and then I, more than one person said that. And then someone said, um, should we snap it? Did I say that correctly, Penny? So I called her out, didn't I? But then Penny, Penny reminded me that um, this is, a, this is a, a strategy for easing stress. You know, you put a rubber band on and you snap it, right? Is that correct? Don't snap it too hard, Audrey, though you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah, so God wants us to grow up in our faith. And so how does that happen? I, you may have an answer, but I'll share with you how I've experienced it and how others who I know have experienced it. Events come into our lives and we have to make a choice. We have to decide if we're going to trust God based on our relationship with God and based on 
the promises of God found in God's word, or will we just do what we think we should do? So, is your faith being stretched? I, I will tell you, um, pay attention. Because God is constantly putting experiences, sending experiences our way for our lives to be stretched. I've known this woman of faith for over 30 plus years. And whenever a crisis occurred in her life, we would talk about it, and then she would say, you know, Michelle, I just said, now, Lord, I thank you. I'm trusting you. You know what I need, and so I'm going to wait on you. She begins by thanking the Lord, and then she prays, and then she waits on the Lord. She walks by faith. And let me just tell you this. My faith has grown because of watching her faith being stretched. My faith has grown because I have had a first-hand look at how her faith has been stretched. So this past week, I received a call about a family situation of very dear friends. And the question was, when the, when the family member shared the situation with me, immediately, immediately I knew what they should do. Immediately. But then I remembered my friend of over 30 years ago when she was faced with an impossible situation, she said, Lord, I thank you, and I'm trusting you for this impossible situation. And so I said to the friend, I said, well, so let, let's, let's pray. And, and let's ask God for the impossible. Let's ask God to whisper in the ear of the one who needs to hear so that this situation can be turned around. Beloved, your pastor's faith was stretched on that evening. And the next day, I received a call informing me that what we had prayed for God had answered. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. My faith was stretched this past week. I learned to ask God for the impossible. I don't know what you're going through um, as family members. I don't know what crisis you may be experiencing experiencing or facing in your life. I don't know about that wayward person or that relation. I don't know, but this is what I do know. It is in your life and it's going to serve as an opportunity. Where's your rubber band? Pull them out. It will serve as an opportunity for your faith to be stressed. Not destroyed, not destroyed, not destroyed, but stressed so that you can grow. And you know, the more we grow, the stronger we become, and the more we trust God, the more we grow, the stronger we become, the more we trust God. This journey that we're on, this faith journey, is about our growing in our relationship with God so that we will get to know who God is. Who God is. So last week, Jesus was feeding the 5,000, right? And we know that they, they, were, they were glad to see Jesus. 
They followed him to Capernaum. Why? Because he had fed them, and they were hanging out with him because it was in their best interest. <laughs> he was hungry. They were hungry. They knew Jesus could feed them. It was all about self-interest. So today, we find that Jesus is in the synagogue. And the Judeans, who are referred to as Jews, I mean, they're murmuring and grumbling. Have you ever, have you ever heard church folk mumble and grumble? It is such a contradiction to who we're called to be, right? Yeah. Don't call out anyone's name. <laughs> they're mumbling and they're grumbling because Jesus has said, I am the bread of life and I have come from heaven. They're thinking, we know you, you Middle Eastern guy. We know your parents. We know that Mary's your mother, Joseph is your Father, what do you mean you come from heaven and you are the bread of life? You see, here's another case of sight getting in the way of truth. The Judeans had the opportunity of experiencing who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent to earth from heaven to invite men and women into an intimate relationship with God through him. They had an opportunity to have their faith stretched, but sight got in the way. It's amazing how sight can get in our way sometimes. Have you noticed that? It gets in the way of faith. But in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, it reads, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. God delights when we stretch or when we act on faith. And he says in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, now faith is confidence of what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. There are some people who will say, show me and then I'll believe. But for the follower of Jesus Christ is, Lord, I believe. And have you noticed that once you step out on faith and believe, then God shows you marvelous things? Have you noticed that? Yes. This is what the ancients were commend, commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Yes. We are a people who are called to walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus reminded the Judeans in the synagogue that he is also Logos, the Word. And every word that proceeds from his mouth, we are they were, we are, to feast upon. In Psalm 119.30, we read, the unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. We need the word of God. I, I, I'm just going to challenge you as I challenge myself. Think about the number of hours that you watch cable news per day. Take 10% of that time and devote it to reading and studying God's word every day. Yes, the Judeans were struggling because they knew who they saw standing in front of them but he was professing to be someone who they could not fully accept or believe. 
well, we are reminded that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that faith is important to God. For it reads, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Yes, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And for those of us, all of us who have faith, God wants us to grow. God wants our faith to increase. There's a correlation between the increase of our faith and our learning more about who God is. So, as we look at the text from last week, and as we look at the text of this week, I would suggest to you that we see faith at three different levels, three levels of understanding who this Jesus Christ is. And the first level is one that's just based on self-interest. What's in it for me, Jesus? If I follow you, what, what's in it for me? And then there's that second level that's just based on sight. I know what I see, and you don't measure up to it, Jesus. <laughs> so I'm not following you. And then there's that third level, and that is the level that I call revelation. And that is, on this faith journey, we continue to discover something more and more and more and more about God because of the revelation of Jesus Christ in our lives. I don't know about you, but uh, I've discovered that life is not boring. Have you discovered that? And I've discovered that the reason why it is not boring is because this relationship that we have with God through Jesus Christ is one that continues to beckon us to draw ever closer and closer and closer and closer to God through Jesus Christ, as Jesus Christ reveals something new to us about God. Now, let me just share with you what I've just done. You see, just when I think I'm getting closer to God, it's as though God just backs up and says, okay, come on, get closer. And I'm th I want to say, but just stand still, God, I'm coming. And God says, come on, come on, come on. There's so much more. There's so much more. There's so much more. There's so much more. Loving God, we give you thanks for loving us and desiring us not to be, not to settle for a self-interest, for a self -interest interest relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Thank you for allowing us to learn more and more about you through Jesus Christ. So as our faith is being stretched, teach us how to trust you even more. And we thank you for the opportunities that we will have this week to exercise our faith for we know when we do, we will discover something new about you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.
So now let us turn to that time of offering, a time where our minds turn and hearts turn toward God and bring our tithes, offerings, our gifts, our talents to our God who has blessed us so richly. So now let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bring our tithes and our offerings to you this day. And we ask, Lord, that you take these gifts and turn them into bread. Bread that feeds the hungry. Bread for the souls of those who are hurting and grieving. Those who are homeless. Those who feel desperate. Lord, you are the bread of life in every way, physically and spiritually. Now take our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings and use them in your kingdom in the way in which you find is needed. And in all things, Lord, we give you thanks. Amen. As we prepare for the closing song today, I just want to say thank you, Evangel Heights United Methodist Church family and friends for the ways in which you make your presence known throughout the community during the week. I want to thank you for the ways in which you volunteer. I want to thank you for the ways in which you um, offer rides to individuals who need them. I want to thank you for the ways in which you speak life-giving words, encouraging words to people who really need to hear from someone who shows by taking the time to speak to them that they are important. I just want to say thank you. And I want to say that as Bishop Trimble uh, wrote in his article this past week, it's okay not to be okay. What does that mean? That means that a lot of people are experiencing a lot of stress. Parents are experiencing a lot of stress. And so parents and adults, youth, if you need someone to listen to you, if you need someone to remind you that you are important and that we care, then send Pastor Michelle an email at michelle.cobb, I-N-U-M-C dot org. And together, we're going to find resources that can assist you because we don't want anyone to feel as though they are alone and no one cares. Evangel Heights, United Methodist Church family and friends, we care. We care about each other, but we don't limit that care to just those within our circle called community. We care about those beyond our circle of community. I want to thank you also for giving to our coin offering this month the coin offering supports um, Hope Ministries meals. And now I'm going to invite you, Evangel Heights uh, Church family and friends, to do two things. First of all, I want you to pray for this 6.30 p.m. gathering today here at Fellow at um, at Evangel Heights United Methodist Church in the Fellowship Hall. We've invited youth and young adults to join um, missionary Steve and Lindsay Polson for a time of conversation, and I'll be a part of that. And, and uh, I'm interested in hearing how we as a church family can support our youth, young adults on their faith journey. The second thing that I would like for you to do is to stand up and let's sing our closing hymn.
I will trust in the Lord. God, we come to say thank you for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. As we leave in this holy, sacred place to return to our respective mission fields, remind us of the commitment that we've made to you today, that we will trust and obey you until the day we die. Grant us the strength Grant us the faith to live out that commitment. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit who will help us to do so. In Jesus Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.